All right now with these four mice, I'm gonna it's all back to back to back. I'm gonna explain the concept of pre and post travel. <laughs> I'm actually just going to throw out these two mice um, because you can't really see the clicks, and so you wouldn't be able to know. But you can you can still tell through spirit post travel, and these just would be harder for me to show. Um, and generally, mice with that sort of closed shell design don't have terrible pre and post travel. And let's just go move mouse. I think that's good. And all right now we got some mice. So there you go. Got a Model D right there. And then we go, go plug in the Viper. And the watch tech, I'm just going to plug into my USB. There we go. So, <laughs> so with pre and post travel, the um, best way I can actually show it is actually if I just put the mouse up. So, Pre-travel is basically like how much the click actuates before you press it in. And this mouse does pretty good. It's, sorry if you can't see it well. I don't know how well this shows up. And this and mice usually always have a little bit. It's possible to really completely eliminate it. So, alright, let me actually try to white mice. I think this will show up better. So, see, so yeah, we got the death header essential. So, as you can tell, the click is not actuated. So, that's pre travel. That is um, the amount you have to press on the click before it actuates. And then you click it in, and then there's post travel, which is like after the click actuates. Can't really hear when the click actuates, but like. I'll just tell you what it actually is. So the click is actuated. It's actually not moving down too much. Model D actually is a pretty good example as well. So, um, so uh, there's quite a bit of pre-travel, but when you press it down, see it doesn't go down at all. That's what it's supposed to do. It's also not supposed to go down pre-travel wise. And realistically, usually most mice have at least a little bit of post and pre-travel. Um, not, not sometimes it's just to make the clicks feel better. Like, it's not always just because it's crap. Um, but generally, and in case you're wondering for Minecraft, and that's what I generally play. Both are bad. Um, with pre-travel, what happens you just sort of click just does not actuate. And so if we jitter click on it, see it just does not actuate. I've actually had the opposite issue on the mouse like the FGX17, which has terrible post travel, where you actuate the click in and then you don't, it doesn't deactuate when you're trying to spam click. So you really don't want either. Um, a little bit either way is not going to not going to be the end of the world. And most cheap mice have a little bit. I haven't used a mice that hasn't had either pre or post travel. I'd say this basically has no post travel unless you just like, I mean, yeah, you can get some if you like. Oh yeah, I'm gonna grab the mouse and go look. Like nobody does that. Come on, guys. Um, but I've never had a mouse that like did both right. And from what I can tell, most mice just don't. Like it's just straight up like basically impossible. I think you can. You think you could do one basically perfect, but you can't do both. But yeah, you don't want a mouse that's too bad in that regard. Like this death adder essential, or um. Because this is probably not going to be a fun experience. But yeah. Hopefully, maybe watching this helped you learn what pre and post travel are. And um, now it's so what you listen to me in reviews and you know what I'm discussing. Alright.